really loud. <laughs> yeah. Dolly and Judith lived in southern Prince George's County. Mm -hmm. Don't know where. But they were, and Carol Sinto, who came with her, was the librarian of the water. In fact, they named the library after Carol. She died. Let me sort of tell you how this is going to go. Sure. <laughs> um, camera's running, and so is this uh, voice recorder. So if one or the other of them has a problem, we'll at least have some form of record. Mm -hmm. um, and probably the sound will be better on that in the long run. Um, I have the shot set up so that you're all in it. Get up, move around if you need to. Don't feel like you're trapped. Um, and, you know, I know Marge is going to need to take off and Mary is going to come later. And basically what I want to do is talk about these, this history and these experiences that you had at sort of two levels. And what, what period, time period? Um, going from, I think, uh, the March to Richmond? The Walton? Or, yeah, or yeah, a little bit earlier, kind of where you think it's good to start. When we were talking, Marianne and I, um, we realized that there were really six or seven big sort of headline events um, that, this is my notes, <laughs> that it would be good to talk about. And those were generally, um, let's see, the March to Richmond, the Fast in Springfield, um, for those of you who were there, which may not be possible at all. Um, White House vigils, which involved, I think, a big yes, portion of this group. were involved in the White House vigils, and including the one that was the lawsuit under the Reagan administration. Yeah. Oh, sweet. <laughs> <laughs> um, the RNC action with the fabulous chain. Yes. Yes. Fabulous <laughs> <laughs> chain. Did you like to go upstairs and get the chain? I don't know. Does the White House get the chain? I have a chain upstairs. Dress, have dress or work? Work, work chain. Work okay. chain. It is heavier it's than the work dress chain. chains you and the work chains. Would you please, you can set it on the table. I have, I have the lock and chain. I have a replica of the ladders we used to climb the White House fence. They do bring, the original is in the Smithsonian. But I had a replica made for me before I gave them the original. And I have the left boot and sock that I used I to the right. I have one boot and sock I used to walk to Richmond, and the other I was with some. Do you want me to bring those things down? Um, yeah, sure. Okay. <laughs> uh, and now, I don't know what your schedule is, but I have reserved this till 6 o'clock. So we I have, have reserved until 6 o'clock. Uh -huh. yeah. Okay. And later, in fact, if we need it. All right. Um, so, yeah. sure. I'd be back down. Wonderful. Do you want some help carrying? I think I can manage. Okay. You, can, you can do. You can do. Oh, well, it just sounds like a lot of stuff. So, <laughs> kind of awkward pile. Tell the chain. <laughs> <laughs> story. Yeah. So there's sort of the big historical level, right? Yeah. Um, but I also want to look at or hear about sort of day-to-day -day efforts that were ongoing. Things like the newsletter, court watches, um, all of that just like ground-level, constant work that was going on. Yes. That definitely, um, and then the sort of how you all are with each other. It's just that's going to show up on the tape, but as you're remembering this, but I really, really want people to understand that there's a um, there's a level of depth here that just doing some work doesn't have. Well, I think that's so very cool. like, Yeah, I think it'll just show. But I've got a couple of. Um, like little context questions that, if it looks like we're getting kind of wandering and distracted, I might refocus us with those. Um, things like, what was your radicalizing moment? You know, um, what was everyday life like when you were working in the movement? Now, you know, because many of you are continuing this work. Um, I have a couple of friends who I bragged to that I was going to do this because they're like really hardcore contemporary feminists, and I said, what do you want to know from these women? Um, and uh, one of them wanted to know what your most gratifying moment was in life, just generally, part of this history or um, the well, I can, part of it's very history. simple for me, the feminist movement saved me probably from killing myself, because yeah. I was a very depressed person when I began to understand there was something else in life. 
Did you say Marianne is coming? Is it Marianne Fowler? Marianne Fowler, Marianne Fowler, Fowler she's was coming. coming late. Yep, and so that should be wonderful. I'm so yeah. glad she's coming. Yeah. If, if you guys nice. need anything, just tell me you need some soda or whatever. I'll go get it. Okay. Yeah, I'm really excited that she's coming too because she told me she didn't. She yeah, because she has she has not bit remained in touch in the same way that some of us have. My mother's comment about it was interesting when I saw that I was doing some things like changing in front of the Republican National Headquarters. Um, she said to me, don't remember, Janie, we are Republicans. Yeah. <laughs> There's a decorum involved in this, right? <laughs> like, <laughs> Republicans don't get up to this sort of thing. Um, yeah, and um, one of my other friends wanted to know what has in the intervening years, what has most surprised you about younger generations of feminists and their activists? So we might return to those, you know? Okay. What are they doing? Uh, what about the actual legislation work that, that was the real action, you know? Um, did you want to cover that? I mean, yeah. Marianne would be the expert on that. Yeah, sure. sure. Uh, and, and the political the, work. And, well, and also, I think the whole it's defeat of Thompson. And that, oh, Jim Thompson. That well, is, was the, really important because I think that it politicized things. It, I, it was a learning experience for me as to show what we could accomplish if we wanted to do something, which I never realized. Right. You know, one of the things, and we had a couple of very astute women in the chapter. Jean Marshall Crawford, Crawford was politically very astute, and also Cornelia Seward was. Yeah. And I can remember one afternoon when we were working on getting women's history into textbooks. Uh, Zelma Thornton, who is an African American, and myself and uh, Cornelia were in the parking lot of the Fairfax County School Board. And she turned around to, uh, to Zelma and myself and she said, when we walk in there, your body language has to be spot on because that man, that superintendent has to believe that we represent every woman in Fairfax County. And, it, yes. and Cornelia was wonderful because she, uh, she in, the, in those years, invented the term, the mythical marching millions. And she was half gloves. And she was from a wealthy family and wore pigeon blood ruby pins on her and Chanel suits and that sort of thing. So she did some amazing work because she was so underground and she had so many connections with I, I remember at a, a now a no now board meeting saying uh, someone saying probably me because I love to make motions. You know, I move Cornelia to put her great PTA suit on and go to thus and such a meeting and make noise. Yes. <laughs> and, and Jackie Lee, um, Marsha Levy was president. She said, "You can't move that she makes noise." And we said, "Yes, we can." Yes, we can. <laughs> she was just to put her, but she had to be in her great PTA suit. She had costumes. Oh, yes. One of the more amazing things, I think, was when at a certain point there was a slight recession in Virginia, and one of the legislative responses to it was to, or several legislators, to suggest a bill which would remove from state workers the benefits for breast cancer and ovarian cell And uh, Cornelia was one of the ones who went down to speak. And she, this was one of the times she turned up in with her pigeon butter pin and her hair beautifully coiffed and her Chanel. She was perfect. She was. She had white gloves. I mean, she was absolutely the picture. And we were kind of sitting down below, and there was a place where you could testify. And then the guys were kind of up on a platform with a table in front of them. And so some of us were kind of sitting down below. And Cornelia got up, and she began to talk about, you know, the, the issues of equity. And she went on and she was saying, you know, I think we might be able to agree with you uh, to deleting these things for women if men would no longer have benefits for testicular cancer, for prostate, for she went through this entire amazing list of things. And the guys up on the platform all crossed their legs, <laughs> almost <laughs> in unison. It was hysterical. But she had this way of bringing class into the situation and then slipping things in that were quite wonderful. But Pat and I got her one time. We were on a bus, I think, going to Florida. And Pat and I were talking at night about 3.30 or 4 in the morning. 
making a little bit of noise, and Cornelia said in a very loud, um, authoritarian tone, do you know what time it is? Very so sick. I turned on my little flashlight, and I said, yeah, it's 424. <laughs> <laughs> it was in the West Virginia Regional Conference. Yeah, yeah. conference. And, and it was in one of the famous Winnebago's. Yes. yes. We had taken one of our many Winnebago's. This, is, this was Cornelia's research efforts for her, her oh, marriage and her, her, uh, her retirement. Uh, while whilst going door to door, particularly in Fairfax County during the 1979 campaign, Cornelia always went to the spots the, uh, where you could have recreational vehicles. But she and Sid were going to rent a or buy a recreational vehicle after they retired. But I think as early as Detroit, which was 75, we used to rent Winnebago's. And it was like the two first the first trip was to no. Detroit. Oh, Detroit. Detroit. It was, we thought we lived in them. Yeah. Yes. We, we would take these Winnebago's and you would drive all Friday night. So you'd arrive on Saturday morning, which is when the conferences started. Fresh as and I would cook. Well, well, she would cook as she didn't drive. Well, part of this was because we had a, a, a jeweler's wife, a, a big jewelry company, and she didn't have any money of her own. And she wanted to go with us, and her husband wouldn't give her the money to go. And remember that? Yeah, and we would go. And so that's, we were going to fly to Texas. And we said, we just turned in our flight tickets and we chartered a bus. No, a, 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 a Winnebago. A Winnebago. And, we, and he, he could not believe that these women had, had figured out how to outwit him that quickly. Oh, yeah. But and you know what? Like, the wonderful We're thing. willing to do it. And when we came back to Washington after t going with her to the Texas meeting, mm -hmm. uh, he said to her, Oh, I'd like to, to have a party and meet those women. <laughs> <laughs> and, and do you remember we that there was this business of how to fit in the beds because we had more we had more more women than than sleeping beds. spaces, <laughs> and we kind of looked at each other and we said uh, we think we need to pair up this way. There are sisters, sisters, and yes, 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 skinny sisters, sisters and for solidarity. solidarity. And, and, for for freedom. Freedom. <laughs> and we would we would sleep head to toe, uh, and SSS, and then FFF, because that way we could double the amount of bed space. With the number of women we could sleep. That trip to Houston. And remember the buttons? We made buttons. Oh, we oh. had a button machine. We had a button machine. And we made buttons all the way to Houston, and we got to, we also to transported sell. some boxes for National Now and made a little money that way. We made buttons all the way to Houston, and we sold them in our green and white pennies, pinafores. I still um, have one. And we ended up having the whole trip to Houston, the Houston International Women's Year Conference cost $18.75 each. <laughs> this was including all our food. Well, well, I remember we, we, name it we had a flat tire, and we had to pull off and, <laughs> and get, wait for them to come with a, with a spare. Yep. And we took the button-making machine off the bus, yes. put it on the side of the road, and we're as I'm we're making our buttons. We were making cool, buttons cool. all the time while we're waiting for our tire to be fixed. Willie hurt her hand. Yes. Wilna Yuli yes. Ficelli bruised her hand, cranking, cranking. Button. button. And on the way home, she said, I want to file a workers' compensation claim. <laughs> and we said, oh, Willie. We said, where did you hurt yourself? She said, right here on my hand. And we said, no, Willie, what state did you hurt yourself in? <laughs> and she said, Virginia and Alabama and Tennessee. <laughs> and we said, no, no, workers' compensation is a state. You have to pick one. And no, the whole injury wasn't done. But the best button story, that trip, we were selling buttons on the floor or the, the hall of the International mm -hmm. Women's Year Conference. And, and Cornelia and I were designated as being able to tuck the money into our bosoms. Some people it would have been too obvious, but Cornelia and I could handle this. <laughs> and a woman came along and was, and at, the, at the Houston conference, you could tell who were the feminists and who were from Utah. Who were the ladies? By the way they dressed. Who were the women? And, and who were the ladies? And this lady came along very clearly from Utah and was going through the buttons, which, and looking for something. She said, I want to buy something for my children. And we normally sold um, a dollar a piece or three for two fifty, you know. She picked up three and we were laughing so hard at trying not to that we charged her the full three dollars because she bought three buttons for each of one for each of her child children and said closets are for clothes. <laughs> 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 
And she did not know what it meant. No. <laughs> but the, the button that you invented, I think, for the Houston Compass that still remains my the, favorite what, button. The one that was on my jacket is an official Pat Harley created button. Ah. Do you have a new great gay whale for Christ? No, I have ERA, yes. Oh, okay. Yeah. But but the best button we ever made was the Nuka gay whale for Christ. Was that the birthplace of slaw? <laughs> Southern ladies against yeah. Southern yeah. ladies yeah. against women. Yes, I think that, that's that's <laughs> kind actually, of where the law happened. Law happened out in the Midwest somewhere. No, right. it didn't. It was down near Richmond. <laughs> Uh, law. I yeah, think law, but we law. were slow. Oh, we were, we're slow. slow. I know slow. And then there was Dick Law. Yes, exactly. DC the ladies. DC yes, ladies yeah. against women. And, and some of those <laughs> demonstrations were hysterically funny. There was one in which we had discovered that in Jerry Fall, in the lobby to Jerry Falwell's office, there were two nude statues naked. Mm-hmm. Yes, let us not be. They were naked. They were naked. And we thought that this was Female. shocking. Female. Yes, uh, no, they did. one of each. One of each. A mixed one marriage. marriage. It was a mixed marriage. Equality. <laughs> well, we because decided that, that to students. help Jerry's movement along, that we might take the opportunity to clothe the statues. They drape them, so to speak. To make them decent. <laughs> and, oh, oh that, that move. And, um, not Celia donated Marshall. all of her white gloves, having been an officer in the Navy. Oh, she was the one of the first Navy captains. And, 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 and I and I don't know who did, did the hats. Aha. Uh-huh. Definitely not a dress change. That's <laughs> not a dress change. That looks like something Jim might have. Uh, yeah. yeah, that's, that's Jim. That's yeah. Jim's I have another piece of it at the yeah. part. Do you? And I have a piece of it. And the Smithsonian I think has two pieces. This is a chain that when the police car pulled up with the, with the chain cutters in the back, the officer turned around and looked at the chain and said, oh, shit. <laughs> I was standing next to a female cop who was sniggering, and she was saying, ain't nothing going to ship that. <laughs> <laughs> uh, that. That day was really, in a way, the beginning of the arrestable actions because yeah it was the first it was the first well they didn't arrest us that was well <laughs> no but we knew it we didn't mind happen I, I yeah. nearly we got ready. killed that day that was the, the Republican National Headquarters yes I first did. time we worn they had worn the dress chains I was a peacekeeper and what happened was because they blocked the front door on South Capitol Street people were going in and out of ground floor windows at the back. <laughs> These are for and you. So a bunch of us you have to press them out. Of the Republican oh National Headquarters God. and stood there singing, Go in and out the window. Oh, this is so in and out the window. And they were so mad. Oh, they I've were. never had such a. Oh, story. they were not happy about anything we no. did that day. But they did not like the song. But oh. the way they acted. Oh my gosh, like, you have the post raise if you're covering that face. You have the post sneaking in the back. Oh, wow. Yeah. Funny. So anybody that didn't get one or wants an extra should take one and then take it. Here's one piece. You have Oh wow. Oh yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Well, yeah. I get one first. <laughs> with that oh. with a copy from the banner. Yeah. It'll need pressing. But yeah. it was good quality. We can flatten them. Yeah. Well we can put the chain on either side. I have the a scanner so I can scan one. How many is there? Yeah, take one. Yeah. Have it off an original. Yep. And you know the other thing is, maybe to memorialize this day, we should sign. Yeah. Oh, yeah. That would be fun. That would be great. That would be the best thing. That would be the best. Georgia, you can just pen. Georgia, you can while it is. But I remember it when Jim came home, came back with the, the chain we should buy. He was very pleased because he'd done something important, and yet he wasn't in any way <laughs> no fingerprints responsible. <laughs> no <laughs> fingerprints. <laughs> cool. Yeah. Wow. That's your shoe. Well, I didn't realize. It was <laughs> Is it in somebody's way? No, no, no. no. <laughs> it's oh, just fantastic. <laughs> You no, know, it's not in the way at all. We mentioned a couple of times we told us about the camera started today. One of the most unique things, and it's 
one of the things I've tried to hear with you for years and years in many, many different places.